new FPV drone, Gep RC Cinebot 30. It's got the new O3 air unit, a 6L1050 battery. What do you think of these lights, by the way? It looks like there's a spot up here if we want to add an extra action camera, but it is dampened right there. Don't have that right now. First flight with the Cinebot 30. Not too loud. Feels pretty good. Honestly, a big part of why I still like bind and fly as opposed to having to build my own is because they come pre-tuned. Like I like to put my own rates in, but definitely a solid amount of performance. Tune on this thing feels really good. And I still feel like I have my acro capabilities. Definitely not as much as like a five inch, but still it is insane. The clarity that you're getting out of the O3 air unit though. I mean, after you fly this for a little bit and then you go back to a regular air unit, it's like, oh my gosh, looks like you have like a really dirty windshield. It is really crystal clear just looking through it. Well, I guess you guys can see the feed I'm looking at anyway, so you already know. Yeah, no problem. 3.0, so three inch propellers. I think I'm gonna put a camera up top like a GoPro Bones and see how that turns out. So check it out. We got the uh, Bones up front, little camera mount that I could put on this little squishy pad to help soften. Since it's a 3.0, it has small propellers, I wanna see if I can get it through this O right here. Ooh, that was not too hard. Kind of bouncy on that one. It's my first flight of the day, so a little bit more warming up would be nice. The O3 air unit is so much better. Let me go ahead and switch to my goggle feed so you can see see all these wires right here. This is definitely sketchy when you don't have the O3. Ooh, okay, <laughs> almost bottomed out a little bit there, but had a little bit of throttle left still. Right, I say we just do one more through the O and we're clear. So Cinewoop style stuff. No problem. One thing I am noticing though is that USB-C port right in there. I can't really reach it with my big ass USB-C cable. <laughs> I carry around the smaller one with me so I can get in there. And that lets me download all the footage from the air unit itself. And you might be able to access the micro SD card through there, but I'm probably just gonna take off these nine screws and get in there that way. But now I'm thinking we head over to the cliffs and do a little bit of diving. And usually the wind is heavier over there, so we can test that out too. All right. Oh, hey, check it out. There's somebody over there flying a Nevada. So here's the cliff we're headed to, by the way. Hey, this watch, the Skagen watch, I've not charged it since the last video and it's at 42% still. And it still shows me my heart rate and my steps. Love this thing. So super appreciate the recommendation on the watch. Really liking this thing. Anyways, I'm trying to get to the bottom here. In my experience of doing dives off cliffs, always better to do it from the bottom, not the top. Because if you're at the top and you dive down and you lose connection, you're very unlikely to get that signal back. <laughs> I almost slipped on some seaweed. So how does this thing compare to the DJI Avada? Well, even though this is a bind and fly, this is still more of a traditional FPV drone, like with beta flight instead of DJI's operating system. So if you're looking for your first FPV drone ever and you don't want any headaches, the Avada for sure, even though these are technically bind and flies, you still have to have a certain amount of knowledge on how to hook it up to beta fly, configure it the way you want to, get the buttons set up properly. For me, by default, the sticks didn't even do the right thing. So like this didn't do throttle, it did something else. Now let's see, you've already been flying the Avada or the DJI FPV for a while and you want something that's just fully more manual and better flight performance these are where you would look but keep in mind that there are drawbacks like for example if i lost signal with this thing this will not return to home i don't have the oh crap i lost control button up here anymore this is the disarm button so it'll literally just shut off and tumble down and fall and crash and I'll cry. And check it out, I got my OSD up so I could see my voltage per cell up there as well as flight time, fly mode, stuff like that. So this came pre-configured. Got a little bit of a breeze, but I don't imagine it's gonna be a problem. Yeah. No problem with dives. I did have my stick almost all the way up though. Man, just crystal clear signal though. Yeah, full stick out there. But still, I'm getting it to do what I want it to do, so that's cool. I'm already down at 3.8 volts per cell, so I'm burning this battery by doing this. Full stick up, oh, it did a little weirdo thing. Let me just come back and inspect it. It did something weird there. I think I was just a little too aggressive with it maybe, or either that or something came loose. Let's check it out. Everything looks like it's intact. It just went like woo. It's important to keep in mind that there's a big difference between a Cinewoop and a acrobatic drone. So Cinewoops are designed to be more stable, but by having propeller guards, you usually sacrifice a little bit of performance, especially on the high end. So I think that's what we're seeing here. So it does still have its limits. It's almost time to come back in for a landing, but I don't wanna, I'm having so much fun. 
<laughs> oh, I only have one battery for this so far. I need to get a few more batteries for this. I wasn't sure how much I was gonna like this, but I definitely like it, so I'm definitely gonna invest in more of these batteries for sure. Woo Between me and the camera, let's do it. Here we go. I wonder if it's gonna start flashing at me if I run it down to like 3.5 or whatever. It's not super windy today, but I'm not feeling any issues with the wind so far, so that is very cool. All right, getting down to 3.5 per cell, so it's definitely time to bring it in, but it's not giving me any sort of low voltage warning, so definitely one of those things that you have to kind of keep in mind. Oh, there it is, 3.5. So I would say if you're gonna go do all these crazy flips and rolls and dives and crazy trickity things, then a Cinewhoop will never be as good as a top guardless drone. But considering that this is a Cinewhoop, I think it flies really, really good. Now there is the slightly bigger Cinelog 35, and that one I think will be able to handle this kind of flying a little bit better. But the downside is it is heavier, it is bulkier, it is quite a bit louder. I feel like there's always a trade-off between size and performance and having prop guards. All right, let's see what's going on here in the comments. Glad Potato Head is back. I love the behind the scenes thing. Potato Jet is okay, but this channel is where it's at. Thanks, Matt. Potato Jet channel is more about making sure a good amount of information is being pushed through it. But on this channel, it's more just like, hmm, what do we feel like doing today? Kevin says, regular six days a week exercise made the biggest difference in my ADD. Yeah, so we've actually been pretty on our game in terms of making sure we work out all the time. So far, I have not lost any weight, unfortunately. <laughs> but definitely, I'm feeling a good stabilization of energy throughout the day. I used to wake up energized and then get really tired in the afternoon and then like wake right back up in the middle of the night. And it beat says, I started one second every day and I'm loving it. A couple of days later, I wash all of that and I'm excited to make more and it really doesn't take that much effort. Maybe that's why I'm loving it. Thanks, Minute Beats. I hope you're still staying up with it. It's one of those things that you kind of have to make it a habit to make sure you do it, but it's nice because it's easy. It's literally one second that you have to film and you'll thank yourself later that you did it. And of course, it's a free app. It asks you, do you want to get a pro account when you start it up, but you don't have to do that. And I've been keeping it up. You want to see? Pro. <laughs> That's such a cool sidecar. Got his little dog in there. Oh, oh. cute! Look at that! Oh my god! And we're caught up to today. Lighting's pretty good, actually. Maybe this is a good chance for me to do a thumbnail. I should turn on the lights. What an amazing thumbnail this is! Oh, wow! There's Carrie hanging out. So one thing I want to try out right now is just to see what kind of battery life I get. Huh. No connection issues at all, actually. Do the whole thing and aha! Uh -huh. I'm out the other side. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. We've officially crossed the five minute mark on battery life right now and we're still at 3.66 volts per cell. The exposure does trip me out in the goggles. It gets really bright and really dark. The auto exposure definitely messes with me a bit. I was able to cross over the seven minute mark on this battery, so for this kind of FPV drone, pretty good. All right. Over seven minutes with the bones, uh, pretty solid. That's on the 6L 1050 battery. I have to order a couple more of these. And I do also have the 6L 1400s that I use for my five inch, and it's definitely heavier. I think we dry it with the lights on this time. Yeah, with this extra weight on the battery and the camera, I'm about two thirds on the throttle right now. So I don't have too much power to get out of it. So if I just go full throttle, yeah, okay. There's still some power in there. <laughs> Considering that this is a Cinewhoop, this thing still flies so good. Just carry it again. Yeah, I'm getting some speed out of this thing too. Definitely more weight with the 1400, but it's an option. Smaller gap right here. Can I get through these? Hey, yeah, no problem. So the difference between a three inch and a 3.5 inch is actually something I'm noticing. There are times where I'm thinking, eh, maybe the prop guards will bump on this, but it has not yet. Let's see, doing rolls and whatnot, not as graceful as a five inch and not as much pull out power, obviously, but uh, it can still do it. I've been able to get this kind of performance out of a three and a half inch before, but never out of a three inch. Let me get a little bit closer to me so we can hear how it sounds. and. You can definitely hear that it still sounds like a Cinewhoop and it's a higher pitch sound compared to something that doesn't have prop guards. But you know, it's actually not as terribly annoying as most Cinewhoops. I'm sure it's kind of hard to tell through a recording, but I'm gonna do a little punch out here. 
Let's see if I could just do a little speed run here. Yeah, I mean, it's going pretty quick there. <laughs> Fairly quick, especially when you consider it's a three inch uh, Cinewoop. So Carrie would never allow me to fly this close to her if it didn't have prop guards, especially around the dogs this close. Do you guys like how comfortable the dogs are with the FPV drones now? Like they don't even care that I'm flying around them anymore. They're just so used to it. All right, and low battery. Again, over seven minute of flight times. I love how Carrie now officially wears a mic too. Love the inclusion of her and her thoughts on your monologues dialogue. <laughs> well, it's a dialogue if there's two people. Monologue if it's one, right? Right, but I'm the one I tend to do all the talking, so. <laughs> do. You don't love talking that much anyways. I'll sit there and say nothing all day and um, it's all good with me. <laughs> So we have this amazing remodeled bathroom, but this is the toilet paper we use. Thanks to this one right here. 